If you keep doing this one thing, you will literally never learn to code. I am not exaggerating. This thing right here is what makes or breaks your success. There's a certain way you need to think about the process of learning to code and becoming a software engineer if you actually want to get there. And sadly, most people simply don't understand this. Before my job as a software engineer, I've had the privilege of experiencing a lot of different industries through my internships. And the one commonality that I learned from all of these is that companies in any industry, especially in tech, look for one type of person. And if you're doing this one thing, you are not this type of person. I get a lot of comments. How do I fix this random error code in problem set seven of CS50? And I obviously can't answer every single question. So what could you as a person who's willing to learn things on their own do to find answers to these questions? Hmm. Obviously I want you to leave comments, but the point here is that a lot of these questions are questions that you could literally find out on your own if you literally just type them on Google. It would even be faster and more efficient to you to type your error codes on Google and figure out that way how to solve them. And so this one thing that every employer hates in their employees and this one thing that is preventing you from learning to code or learning any skill in general is expecting other people to do stuff for you that you could and should be doing yourself. In other words, what you need to do is educate yourself. And very specifically in the domain of coding, I want you to get into a habit. Any question you have, whether it's an error code or how to learn X, type the question on Google. It's literally easier and faster for you to find the information yourself than waiting for someone else or some person, some particular person to give it to you. Because this is exactly it, the quality that employers look for in software engineers. In any of my internships, in any, any of my jobs, the one quality that these employers are, you always look for is people who are self seeking, people who are able to find things out on their own and solve problems without needing someone else to just hand them the solution. Because a lot of the time in your job, you'll be solving problems where literally no one in the organization might even know how to solve. When you're getting paid for anything, when you're trying to create value, you are by definition solving very difficult problems, solving problems that other people don't know how to solve. Because if other people knew how to solve them, you wouldn't be needed. Now I know this video might come across the wrong way and I'm probably gonna get some hate for this. I just wanna make this clear that I don't mean that you should never ask for help. Obviously when you're working as a team and with anything like programming with like communities and all that kind of stuff, other people and communities are there to help. So what you need to do is adopt this mindset of being naturally curious and before you're asking for help, you should try to exhaust all possibilities of finding the information yourself first. And this is also what I learned at McKinsey. Before you ask your manager your help, you're always expected to first just come up with something, just put something on the paper so that you've actually thought about it before you go and bother someone else with it. And in the context of coding, what you should do is when you have any problem and you feel like you're stuck, literally write something down. Anything you can write down on your code file, just put it there. And it's so much easier for someone more experienced to then iterate over that and push it in the right direction. And so that way you'll come up with these very specific questions. I tried this and then I did this and then I got this specific error how could I go about solving this? And this applies to asking help from your colleagues if you're working or from the internet if you're just coding for yourself. And this is so especially true in the tech field. What people always say that the difference between a junior software engineer and a senior software engineer is that the senior is better at Googling things more effectively. Yes, even Googling things is a skill that you will get better at. People are too lazy to try to find answers themselves. Become the type of person who always exhausts all the available resources to find answers before expecting other people to just give you the answer. Because most of the time, they probably won't be able to. Okay, rant over, but with all that said, here's answers to some of the most common questions I get. How to get started learning to code? Pick a course and just start. If you want some suggestions, I've literally made so many videos about this, but here you go. If you wanna learn computer science, I recommend you check out my free computer science Notion template. It's based on the Open Source Society University curriculum that matches the curriculum of actual computer science degrees simply compiled from online resources. It's subject of one of the first videos I made on this channel. And one of the first courses you do there is gonna be CS50. And if you're looking for just one introductory course on computer science, CS50 is the best one. If you wanna learn coding specifically, that will obviously depend on the 
the language. If you want to learn Python for a free option, I recommend Python for everybody, which will be linked down below. I've obviously done a whole bunch of different coding courses. The coding courses that I mainly use myself nowadays are by Zero to Mastery. Zero to Mastery is essentially a platform full of, I think they have like thousands of hours of coding courses for simply one subscription. So essentially, instead of paying for a Netflix subscription, watching all these useless series and movies that are not helping you, you can instead be investing that money into your coding education. Nowadays, whenever I want a course on anything new, if I'm wanting to learn hacking or JavaScript or blockchain development, the first place I look is Zero to Mastery and try to see if they've already made a course on this because I'm subscribed to the platform anyway. And most of the time they do. How do I get a job as a software engineer? First, learn to code by using a couple of these online resources, then build a couple of portfolio projects that are really good, then apply, 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 and that's it. What projects should I build? You should build projects that you actually want to build, projects that solve a problem for you, because those are the projects that you'll actually be excited to do, and so therefore you'll be willing to put in effort to make them really good. Do I need a degree to get a job as a software engineer? No, you don't. But to be completely honest, that is not the only reason why people fail to learn to code. When you're coding, the absolute best way to get quality work done is to achieve the flow state. And in order to do that, it has been shown that listening to certain kind of relaxing music can be very helpful. So that's why having high quality noise canceling headphones is a critical part of any programmer's toolkit. Which is why I am super excited to talk about these brand new Space A40 earbuds by Soundcore, which they've kindly provided to me to try out. Soundcore's Space Liner brings you the ultimate industry-leading noise cancelling experience paired with ultra-long battery life so you can enjoy the extra personal space you need to get work done wherever you go. The Space A40s reduce noise by up to 98% and they are SGS certified. Something that's really important to me with earbuds is long battery life because I hate it when my earbuds run out of battery when I'm at the gym or something and then I can't listen to anything. That's why one of my personal favorite features with these was their ultra long 50 hour playtime, which is almost two times longer than the competitor's average. The Space A40 also uses adaptive noise cancelling to automatically identify noise around you and select the ideal mode, which makes the noise cancelling experience really high quality and super nice to use. And not only that, the Soundcore Space A40 is the first ever earbud to use AA Diabragon, providing you detailed rich sound and high res wireless sound. And what I've also loved about this while trying them out is that they're really small and easy to carry. So thank you for Soundcore for sponsoring this video and providing these to me to try out. I've loved using them and I think you will too. So a link to try them out will be on the first line of the description. Okay, with that, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like down below. If you enjoyed this video, you might actually enjoy some of my other videos. If you don't know who I am, here's a story of how I learned to code in four months and got a job as a software engineer. If you want to hear more about this free computer science degree thing, you should watch this video right here, which explains the whole thing. With that, let's keep coding, enjoy the journey along the way, and I'll see you next time.